steam and there's nothing to worry about. We come here and we're going to conquer and we're going to take some. Is that understood? Yes, sir. That's what we're going to do, sweetheart. We are going to go and get some. Hey. All right, people, on the ready line. Hey everyone, I'm Andrew and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'd like to go over Neil Blomkamp's Alien 5 we were so close to getting. But before I do, if you could go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the content. Also, leave a like or a comment on the video. It would greatly help out the channel. Now, let's get into Alien 5. So this all started in 2015 when the director of Chappie, Neil Blomkamp, released per his Instagram account a couple of concept artwork for his vision of Alien 5. Now, at the time that he released this artwork, the studio was not involved or did not greenlight anything. So when Neil released the artwork per his Instagram account, he was just basically getting the fans excited about what his vision of an Alien 5 movie would be because he was a huge fan of the Alien franchise growing up. Now around February 18th of 2015, he met with 20th Century Fox and pretty much they greenlit the project. Seemingly after that visit, on June 29th, it was announced that they would be filming in Vancouver, British Columbia, which according to Ridley Scott, the movie would come out in 2017. Now things got quiet for a little while, and it was revealed in October of 2015 that Neil went on his Twitter account and told fans that the new Alien movie was kind of on hold pending Prometheus 2. His tweet reads as the following, so I shall be working on other things, as much as I love the Xeno and Lieutenant Ripley. After that, we would have to wait a full year for news to come out of the movie, and this news came out in the form of a picture of an adult newt that the director released to spark more interest in the movie once again. So it wasn't until around 2017, during a press tour for Alien Covenant, that Ridley Scott let everyone know that Alien 5 probably won't happen and that the project was essentially dead. I remember finding out this news and just being blown back by it because like how far in production they actually were and like all the concept art and then we actually got like what the pulse rifle looked like. I was shocked they actually killed the project because I thought they were too far in to actually do so. So there was no script that was leaked, so all we have to go off of is the concept art and what Neil has said in other interviews about his project. With that being said, let's get into the concept art that had me and a lot of other people intrigued about it. I think we'll start out with like the setting or location of the film. One location looks to take place on this offshore oil rig with like a stormy night setting. Now, I'm not sure when this would have taken place in the movie, but it would have involved like an alien infestation on this rig with the night setting and the storm coming in. And we see it's not just the regular aliens that are involved in this. The queen is also present wreaking havoc. I think this would have been really cool to see in the movie to have the aliens in this nighttime setting where you can only see glimpses of them when the lightning strikes and you get to see the water run off their bodies. I think this would have been a really cool concept to see. Let's pivot to our next location in the film, which is this piece of art showing a gigantic structure in the middle of the city. We can assume that this is the Wayland yutani Corporation building. I'm not sure if this piece of concept art takes place on Earth or if it's a different planet. I believe this is where most of the other artwork stems from, where you have the tropical forest inside the big building and the labs and the other stuff. I believe it all comes from this big giant building. So once inside the building, we can see they've acquired like a derelict looking ship. Now from what Neil has said, this is not the one that is featured in the first two films. As you guys can see, this one looks a little bit smaller than the original one. And it is also worth noting that this ship is covered in hive-like material, which we'll see that later on in the other photos. Also, we see inside the facility that they have like a full lush green plant life in there. And this is probably to mimic like a zoo-like enclosure so that that way they can study the xenomorphs in like a habitat. In the middle of this forest enclosure, we notice there's this relic or object in the middle. Now this thing looks similar to how the outside of the giant building looks. I'm not really sure what this object is or how it all ties into the narrative of it. 
I know Neil sat down with Ridley Scott to talk about where his Prometheus movies were going, so that way he could leave stuff out if need be, or he could better connect to them if need be. So just the theory that the smaller object or relic might be engineer technology maybe. With that being said, we possibly could have had the engineers in this movie, or at least have been involved in some way in the plot. It was widely known that this version that Neil was working on was going to be a direct sequel to Aliens. And with the concept art that was released of like the aging of the characters and like an older Newt and everything, there would definitely be a time jump. With that being said, about the actors aging up in a time jump, that would mean that Ripley had to have gone through more briefings with what happened in Aliens and maybe the company covering it up again thus leading to her and Hicks forming like this squad of mercenaries or like-minded people that didn't really trust the company as well. I mean, over time, there had to be more like-minded people that thought the way that Ripley and Hicks did about the company. I'm only saying this because if you look at the patching on the mercenaries, they're all from like different countries or different regions. So I don't think these are like a rival company's henchmen trying to get the aliens or like colonial marines of any fashion. I feel like if these were colonial marines, they'd all have the same badging on them. Whereas these guys are mercenaries or like-minded people that are helping out Ripley and Hicks stop the corporation. Along with Hicks and Ripley returning and possibly Newt, we have other familiar things like the power loader or like at least a version of it. The Colonial Marines dropship is also present in the concept art, and they even brought back some of the weaponry used by the Colonial Marines, like the M56 smart gun, which you can see in this picture, Ripley is all suited up in the smart gun armor, and she's actually holding the smart gun. That would have been so badass to see that in a scene where Ripley is all suited up, mowing down aliens with the smart gun. And just to show how far this project actually got into production, Neil released this picture of the most iconic alien's weapon, which is the M41A pulse rifle. Personal friend, this is an M41A pulse rifle, 10 millimeter, an over and under 30 millimeter pump action grenade launcher. Feel the weight. Now this weapon would be making a return, but it looks like it would be making a return with a lot of upgrades on it. As you can see, we have rails for attachment on this one, a flash hider, and now an optic mounted on top. I would have really liked to see this in action in the movie and see how it was going to function. So we know an alien movie wouldn't be without like a synthetic or an artificial in the movie. The concept art we got shows there would have at least been two synthetics in the movie. From the descriptions, we learned one was named Kilson and the other one was named Jax. Now it's worth noting that in the pictures, these synthetics are bald, and this is different than the others that had come before. And is it just me, or does this have like the facial structure of Hugh Jackman? Now you gotta understand, when he was doing this concept art, he was actually making the movie Chappie, so he was working with Hugh Jackman at the time. I think that would have been hilarious to see him in this Aliens movie, Bald, whereas in Chappie we got that ridiculous mullet. Now we get this picture of Hicks performing surgery on one of the synthetics, and I'm assuming this is to reprogram slash repurpose it for them to use and help them out in the movie. Now we get some interesting set pieces in this concept art, like one of these pieces gives us this alien resurrection vibe with Ripley coming up through the water surrounded by like a hive-like structure. I wonder if we would have also got the alien swimming around in the water like in that film. Now let's go to the lab pictures. This is where we get a view of inside the labs and what was going on with experiments and stuff. We see this lab with about 9 to 10 eggs in the room. The eggs are all hooked up to like these monitors or some source of power. It's hard to tell from the picture what's going on if they're just monitoring the eggs or if they're actually like giving them a power source. And from this picture there are about two scenarios that might play out here. One, Ripley and Hicks are in there with the scientists to sabotage the experiments. Or the other scenario is that the company has forced a person into the room in order to impregnate them with the alien embryo. 
Now, we know this film would have introduced a new form to the alien lore, per se. Here we have the worm or snake-like creature called the trematode. This creature would have burrowed into its victims using its acid saliva, and the purpose would have been to not only produce one face hugger, but multiple face huggers. So just think of that, it makes it a more effective impregnating machine if there's like more face huggers than just one. And I'm sure this birthing process with the multiple face huggers would have been grotesque and just what we expected as fans. We also get to see Hicks face off against this new creature with what seems to be like an alien weapon he's holding. Now I'm not sure if this weapon comes from the derelict ship that they have in the facility or if this is just something that the corporation manufactured. In the next piece of concept art we see Hicks struggling with the trematode creature as it is trying to get into his neck. Now we see concept art of these spider-like creatures that are all over the place. These would have been the size of the face huggers coming from the trematode, so they would have been a lot smaller. So they would have been a lot smaller starting out and then probably have to grow up to the bigger size. We even see them in the scene with the acid eating through the bombs, which I'm sure would have caused like a big explosion in the movie. Now towards the end of this concept art, we have Ripley gearing up in a fire-rated suit. She traverses some underwater pipe systems in the suit and ends up in this room that is completely on fire. My assumption is she's headed towards the final battle in the movie to face off against the alien queen once again. In order to make this like a fair fight against the queen and like a callback to aliens when she suited up in the power loader, we see that this concept art shows that she'll be suiting up in like an organic exoskeleton that looks kind of like an alien suit. This exosuit looks something to like how the queen is set up and is probably made by the Whalen Corporation. And if there's one thing that Neil excels at, it's exosuit boss battles. I mean, he gave us that alien suit at the end of District 9 that was just messing stuff up. And you have Matt Damon and his exosuit in Elysium. I'm sure this would have been another boss level fight at the end of this great movie. I wish this movie would have been made, I think this would have paired nicely with Alien and Aliens, but with Disney buying out 21st Century Fox and a development of a new Alien movie by Fetty Alvarez and an Alien TV series on the way, I don't think this movie will happen. And recently, Neil has been on the Joe Rogan podcast and he has gone over the Alien movie and I feel like he has moved on from it. Well, guys, that was a pretty in-depth look at Neil Blumkamp's Alien 5 and what could have been. Now, I know there's an Alien 3 script out there that is better than the movie we got and has a book adaption of it, so I think I'll be doing a future video on that as well. I have a ton more videos I'm working on getting out to you guys, so stay tuned for that. As always, guys, thanks for tuning in, and I'll catch you on the next one.